Vivek Ramaswamy, Woke Incorporated, Inside Corporate America's Social Justice Scam. In an era where being awoke often means aligning oneself with progressive causes, author Vivek Ramaswamy cautions us to stay watchful of corporate co-optation in his book, Woke Incorporated, Inside Corporate America's Social Justice Scam. This book summary delves into how corporations are leveraging societal concerns for their advantage, hiding beneath a veil of virtue while pursuing their own selfish motives. From stakeholder capitalism's deviation from fundamental democratic principles to the concerning rise of big tech censorship, this summary provides an overview of the delicate state of corporate involvement in America's essential values. The Debasement of Social Values the term woke refers to being hyper aware of power structures and injustices based on race, sex, or gender. However, corporations have co opted this concept as a smokescreen to profit off of social values and dictate them to the rest of society. This practice, known as woke capitalism, has become prevalent in recent years. Companies use their supposed support for diversity and other social causes to distract from negative practices. For example, Goldman Sachs used its pro-diversity stance to divert attention from a billion-dollar bribery scandal. This debasement of social values ultimately harms American democracy. Stakeholder Capitalism and the Distortion of American Democracy The rise of stakeholder capitalism has led to companies being responsible for social as well as shareholder welfare. The focus is no longer just on generating value for shareholders, but also on considering the impact of the business on stakeholders like customers, suppliers, employees, and communities. However, this has led to companies playing an active role in political matters, which is a moral judgment rather than a business one. When companies use their corporate power to push their views, they essentially dictate people's values. This distorts American democracy and undermines the democratic process. It's acceptable for CEOs to speak up about their values as private citizens, but not to blast those messages out using their corporate megaphones and money. Tackling Pharma's Price Gouging In 2015, Clinton and Trump both expressed concerns about the pharmaceutical industry's price gouging. In response, companies like Allergen pledged to limit price increases to once a year and by single digits. However, their actions were mainly aimed at avoiding government regulators and potentially stricter price restrictions. The key message is that companies should face repercussions for their conflicts of interest. To tackle corporate misbehavior, the scope of the Business Judgment Rule, BJR, a special legal privilege for corporations, could be restricted. This would make CEOs and directors accountable for their decisions and prevent them from using corporate resources to support their personal interests. The Religion of Wokeness Emmanuel Cafferty was fired for making a hand gesture that he thought was an OK sign. Little did he know, it was a symbol used by the alt-right to represent white power. This incident sheds light on the larger issue of wokeness becoming a religion that discriminates against those who don't subscribe to it. The author argues that companies pushing woke beliefs on employees could fall under religious discrimination a violation of Title VII of the 1964 Civil Rights Act. The solution, according to the author, is to recognize wokeness as a religion and abide by the rules that apply to all other religions. Data Sharing with Authoritarian Regimes Corporations act as dictators while being manipulated by foreign dictators like China's Xi Jinping. Airbnb hired Sean Joyce, a former deputy director of the FBI, as its chief trust officer to protect user safety on the platform. However, before the year was up, Joyce resigned as Airbnb regularly shares data about American users with China's ruling political party, the CCP. The data it hands over includes phone numbers, email addresses, and messages between users and the company. Joyce raised concerns about this practice with senior Airbnb executives, but he was told that the company was not there to promote American values. This situation highlights how foreign dictators, primarily China's Xi Jinping, have learned to benefit from the American company's wokeness. 
companies first cultivate an image of themselves as a virtuous entity by promoting a woke social cause, which wins consumer trust. They then monetize this trust by generating clicks, selling ads, and charging fees. After they have amassed a vast amount of user data this way, the CCP demands access to it and requires the company to do business in China. Companies do as the CCP says and make tons of money in the Chinese market. They then keep silent about Chinese abuses of power, such as its genocide against the Uyghur ethnic group, while continuing to signal their support for woke causes back in the US. These companies trick consumers into believing they are virtuous while aiding and abetting horrifically oppressive, authoritarian regimes like China. While acting like dictators themselves in the US, they keep quiet about foreign political atrocities. For example, YouTube banned videos that were critical of policies such as lockdowns during the COVID-19 pandemic. To many, this approach is nonsensical as opinions about the necessity of lockdowns are just that, opinions, not factual statements. However, it is not a surprise that tech companies wanted to ensure users were not too critical of lockdowns as it meant more people shopping for groceries on Amazon, taking meetings over Zoom, and subscribing to Netflix. In addition to caring about profit, Silicon Valley also wants raw political power. Big Tech Censorship The book elaborates on the questionable actions taken by big tech platforms like Twitter to manipulate the information available to the public, especially before an election. The author's view is that this is possible due to Section 230 under the Communications Decency Act of 1996, which provides immunity to tech platforms from the content posted by their users. However, the author believes that there should be an amendment to this law, and the companies should be bound to the standards of the First Amendment. The Bastardization of Community Service and the Rise of Wokeness The American culture has misconstrued community service to mean personal gain, leading to a lack of authentic service and the rise of wokeness. The author suggests mandatory civic service for high school students to address the issue at its core and give them a sense of unity and shared identity. Ramaswamy's Woke Incorporated ultimately points to a corporate America that has cleverly utilized the notion of wokeness to their advantage, often at the expense of American identity and democracy. While stakeholder capitalism has distorted the democratic process, big tech manipulates the flow of information to maintain control. Wokeness has filled a void caused by the deterioration of authentic community service, appealing to those seeking a sense of righteousness. To rebuild a meaningful shared identity, Ramaswamy suggests mandating civic service in high schools, thereby promoting solidarity and reducing susceptibility to corporate exploitation. With a measured call for change, Woke Incorporated serves as an urgent reminder of the co-optation of values and the need to protect the essence of American democracy.